everyone, welcome to another episode of the Millionaire Happy Podcast. My name is Boom Shikha. And in this episode, I want to speak to you guys about spiritual awakening and how someone asked me if there was a honeymoon period to spiritual awakening. You know, is it possible that when you are first awakened, when you first have that epiphany moment, that there is more to life? than just punching a clock or going to to your job or making money. When you have that first moment of spiritual awakening, you're like, your mind has been blown open and you know all these things that you didn't know before. You you suddenly are aware of all these things that you had wasn't were not aware of before. And so you are spiritually awakened. You know, there are obviously tears to this and levels to it. And so suddenly you see more than you saw before. And so you're going through world in a state of ecstasy. You are you're excited to be alive. All of a sudden, you realize, okay, this is there's more to this world than what I see through my senses, uh, through my eyes. But after a while, with as with everything, you know, we're human beings, and even the best of things, after a while, so, start getting stale. And you will notice that when you are first spiritually awakened, everything is more colorful, everything is more vibrant. But eventually, it'll start losing its vibrancy. It'll start losing its color. And you'll start going back into that mode of hating everything and hating everyone and and not being as aware and not being as careful or not not caring as much or not being as intense about it or all of those things, right? <clears throat> I think it happens whenever we are going to move from one level to another. So it's not necessarily that we are that it's a honeymoon period necessarily. But I think what's happening in the spiritual awakening realm or the path that we're taking is that as with schooling, you know, you, you're you're in grade one and you learn a few things in grade one and then you move on to grade two and you learn a few more things in grade two. The same thing with spiritual awakening. You know, we kind of go through levels in the awakening process as well. And it's a, le- it's a never-ending process, really, if you think about it. There's never a point where you can say, okay, I am fully spiritual awakened. I have no more work to do. I can just sit here and everything will just come to me. I don't think you ever get to that point. There's always more and more and more work to do. But I do think that there are tiers or levels or grades that you are passing through as you are going on this journey. Now, the first grade is the hardest and the most difficult to get through because when you are not awakened or you're asleep, and you move from being asleep to being awakened, I think that's like the hardest thing, the hardest tier, hardest step to accomplish. It's so difficult to go from that place of not knowing anything at all and being completely dead and asleep to that space of knowing something and, and realizing there's something more to everything and, and being a little awakened. It, it, it's just madness. It, it's going from being um, perhaps as as unawakened as an animal or having the brain capacity of a dog versus a human being you know there's a big difference between the two and that's basically the difference between uh, a non-awakened versus an awakened person there's such a huge level difference now i'm not saying that one is better than the other because there is no better or worse in, in this world but i'm saying that there's a big difference in the two right and so the first step is always the hardest get to that point where you are a little awakened that is the hardest step but there are more steps to accomplish. And I feel like when you start getting into that honeymoon period or you start getting that that spiritual dormancy thing where you feel like, hmm, I don't think that I feel the joy of being awakened anymore. I don't feel as alive anymore. I don't feel as colorful, as intense anymore. I think what's happening is that you're getting ready to level up. And the reason why I say that is because every single time you level up, before you level up, you are dissatisfied with the way things are going right that's that's the reason why you level up is because you see everything and you see how things are running and you see the way things are set up and you think to yourself this is cool but I feel like there's something more behind the curtain I feel like there's something bigger and better out there and that sense of dissatisfaction is what pushes you to explore a little bit more to ask more questions to journal to meditate do all those things and for you to level up, right? If you didn't do all those, if you didn't ask the question, first of all, if you didn't feel that sense of dissatisfaction, there's no way you would go out and ask those questions and you wouldn't do the work that's necessary for you to level up, right? And so I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to go through these periods of spiritual dormancy or spiritual dissatisfaction. 
I think it's necessary. I think it's an absolutely a necessary part of the whole process of spiritual awakening. And that's the reason why a lot of people will go through moments where they think to themselves, this is not as as beautiful or as, as cut up as awesome that I as I imagined it to be because I imagined that once I was awakened then it's going to be glory and rainbows throughout the entire path but that's obviously not how it is right the the more the higher uh, level up you go the harder it gets actually because the more things that you see are dissatisfying you and the more you realize this all sucks and there is something that we need to do in order to change the world in order to make it a better place or in order to modify it so that it doesn't suck as bad, which is a very technical term, obviously. The more things that I wanted to say about this is that it's also a very um, tumultuous path, the spiritual awakening journey, because you take a few steps forward and there's a very high possibility that you will take a few steps backwards. Uh, and that's just normal. And so that's one of the reasons as well why you feel like, you know, you've taken a few steps forward and you feel amazing and everything is perfect and everything is working out the way you're supposed to and you feel awakened and you feel this this rainbow life and then you take a few steps for backwards because that's how learning happens right you you can you're not always going to be moving forward and that's one of the reasons why I love this journey that I'm on because it's so interesting and so fascinating because I'm I'm never going to get there, whatever that means, right? I'm never going to get to that end point because I'm always either moving backwards or learning something more or growing a little bit more or or snapping back into my old forms or old self or old ways of doing things and then coming back around again. And so there's so many different ways of kind of going on this journey, but it is not, definitely not a straight line path. It is not an A to B path. It's going to be A to B and then back to A and then maybe a little bit forward to C and then maybe to B and then back to A. And so it's going to be a very random up and down kind of path. And I think that's something that we all have to get used to if we're going to choose to follow the path of going on this awakening journey. It is also a very um, lonely journey, I find, is because... Uh, most people want to speak about or do the things that are that are normal and human-like and, and in this realm, in this physical realm, which is awesome. I love the physical realm. I love this life. I love, you know, physical things. I love clothes. I love shoes. You know, I am a typical human being. Um, and so I do like being in this realm, but that's not all I want to do. That's like part, maybe 10, 20% of my life is spent on that because I have to live in the physical realm. But the rest of my time I want to spend in that spiritual realm, in that awakening phase where I'm thinking about all these interesting ideas and I'm talking about all these ideas and I'm journaling about it, meditating, and just kind of spending time in solitude trying to go through the process of awakening, right? Unfortunately, most people do not want to or not prefer to or whatever it might be, don't want to spend that time in solitude or don't want to spend time with people who are doing this kind of stuff. That's why as I have gone on this journey, I've lost many friends uh, and many pe acquaintances and many people in my life because, because they are on a different path than me, which is completely, completely fine. That's the way the world works. But that was also in the beginning caused me a lot of strife because I was thinking to myself, is this really worth it, right? Is this really worth it, losing all these people, losing all these friends in order to gain some kind of awakening in, on this journey that I'm on is it really worth it and that also sometimes causes the honeymoon period to kind of lose its luster to to feel less rainbow like to feel less colorful and joyful to feel like really I, I just don't know if I am cut out for this lonely journey or if I'm cut out for this journey where I lose everyone of course if you've been on this journey you know that as soon as you start losing all these people it's a sign that there are other people that are going to come into your life. And that's what happened to me specifically is that when I started losing all my friends and I spent a couple of years just being on my own and being alone, I noticed that after that I had a bunch of new interesting individuals come into my life who were on the same kind of path as me. So that means that even though I had to spend that time as a sort of um, payback maybe um, to the fact that I was on this journey I had to kind of lose all those friends and be alone for a little bit I noticed that after that I started getting all these interesting people in my life and now I am surrounded by people who are on the same path as me and who are able, who I'm able to speak to about all the different things that the journey the awakening journey involves right this question about 
if the spiritual journey has a honeymoon prop period, it was actually asked to me by one of those people in my life, and her name is Eleanor, and she asked this brilliant question. I had to obviously do an episode on it because it's such an important question to ask. Not only because you know you're going to go through this, but also because if you know beforehand that this is going to happen, you can prepare yourself for it. It's not all going to be flowers and roses and chocolates. It's going to be it's going to be negative sometimes and you're going to go through certain moments in your life where you're going to think, really, I don't really care about the awakening process. I don't want to go through this shit anymore. I want to go back to being normal. I want to go back to being the person I was before this. And I know I've had those moments as well, so I'm sure you're going to as well. It's just the way of the world. Again, if you guys have any questions at all, please message me anytime. My email address is boomshakaiathemillionaireherpy.com. If you guys have any suggestions for future episodes or anything else, please message me anytime. I shall see you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.